Hi, I'm Divyangana. I'm a PhD student at the University of Melbourne, and I'll be talking about how the neighborhoods we grow up in can shape our brains and why home and school environments matter. So more than 10% of children live in poor neighborhoods. A disadvantaged or poor neighborhood is one in which people generally have lower levels of income, employment, as well as education. So the neighborhoods we grow up in can have long-term impacts on the course of our lives. To give you an example, these are two neighborhoods separated by one street in Pittsburgh in the United States. Even though they're right next to each other, individuals who grew up there have different household incomes, employment rates, as well as incarceration rates as adults. And for children, the neighborhoods can impact mental health and cognition. For example, children who grew up in poor neighborhoods tend to have greater mental health problems and worse cognitive and academic performance. So the question we wanted to ask in our study was how do neighborhoods impact mental health and cognition? What are the mechanisms through which disadvantage is able to impact behavioral outcomes? Since the brain is still dynamically developing during childhood and adolescence, it's been suggested that neighborhood disadvantage or living in a poor neighborhood can have an impact on brain development during childhood and adolescence. And that these brain alterations can lead to behavioral alterations such as mental health problems and cognitive deficits. So what we tested in the study, in a large sample of over 7,500 children from the United States, we tested whether neighborhood disadvantage was associated with something called functional connectivity. Functional connectivity essentially refers to the way that brain regions communicate with each other. And it refers to the coordinated activity of different brain regions when someone is resting and thinking of nothing in particular. Even while resting though, we typically see synchronized activity between brain regions that usually work together to perform tasks. And then we're able to say that these brain regions are functionally connected to each other. And the second question we wanted to ask, which we felt was really important, was that are there any factors that can reduce the effects of neighborhood disadvantage on functional connectivity, as well as mental health and cognition? And now onto what we found. We found that children who grew up in disadvantaged neighborhoods had widespread alterations in functional connectivity. And these alterations were found to be in brain regions involved in several higher order cognitive functions, such as goal setting, planning, learning and memory, self-reflection, executive function, as well as sensory motor functioning and language processing. What's more, 50% of these brain changes were associated with poor cognition and mental health in the children. So this essentially suggests that growing up in a disadvantaged neighborhood led to changes in children's cognitive function and mental health may be through changes in functional connectivity. We also found that some of these brain alterations were less pronounced in children who had positive home and school environments. This suggests that good parental support and positive schooling can buffer some of the negative effects of growing up in a disadvantaged neighborhood. Just to illustrate some of the effects that we observed, so disadvantaged children who receive low levels of parental support, so bottom right in this figure, have different functional connectivity compared to other children, which likely leads to worse cognition and mental health outcomes. On the other hand, disadvantaged children who do receive high levels of parental support, which is top right, tend to have equal functional connectivity to, their, to more advantaged children. And this likely uh, contributes to having equal cognitive and mental health outcomes as well. A similar pattern was found for school environments. A good school environment in our study entailed telling the child and their parents that the child did a good job, good relationships with teachers, some say in decision-making regarding class rules and activities, availability of extracurricular activities and feeling safe at school. And good parenting included things like smiling at the child often, expressing their love for the child, supporting the child and making them feel better when they're upset and discussing the child's worries with them. So to conclude, while disadvantaged neighborhoods can negatively affect children's brain development and well-being, this can be offset by giving children better home and school environments where they feel supported receive positive feedback and have opportunities to engage in different activities. I uh, just want to thank my supervisor and my co-authors on the project, as well as the site managers and participants of the Atlas and Brain Cognitive Development Study. Thank you.